we'll start. Uh, we'll open with a karakia. Kia tau te rangi Māori, o te rangi e tu i honei, o te papa e takutu nei, o te taiao e ahi nei, ki runga i a tātou, tīhei Māori ora. Uh, nō tiku iti, a hau kei te atatū, a hau i noho ana, kei sport Waitakere, Happy Families Waitakere, a hau i mahi ana, uh, ko Caitlin, Nicole, a hau, nō reira tina koutou, tina koutou, tina koutou katoa. No, my hearty my key teenage systems change in action webinar. Uh, we are talking Kai today. Uh, no, my hearty my to our speakers joining us from the Whanganui um, and Tamaki Makoto today. We have Louise Oskin, Dave Hursthouse, and Rebecca Davis. Tina Koto. Uh, yeah. Dave is a member of the Kai Order Collective. Louise is from Whanganui Kai. Hub, thank you, Louise. And Kai Oral Collective. <laughs> yes, thank you, Louise. And Rebecca Davis is from the Healthy Families Whanganui Rangitike Rua Pihu team. They're based at Te Oranganui Iwi Health Authority. Um, and they will all tell you a bit more about themselves soon. Big thanks to my team member Priscilla Tuisa Moa. She is helping out online today as well. Kia ora, Priscilla. Uh, some tikanga for this webinar. While the presenters are talking, I, uh, we welcome you to put any questions or comments that you have for them into the chat on Zoom. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, uh, you can make a comment on there and I will put your partai to them at the end. It might be that they answer your question throughout the presentation, so that's why we wait till the end. Uh, but let's get started. It's now my pleasure to hand you over to Rebecca. Kia ora, Rebecca. Tēnā koe, tēnā koe, Caitlin, tēnā koe, Priscilla. Thank you so much for having us uh, today. Um, Morena Koto, it's great to be here and see all these uh, gorgeous faces. So a lot who are very familiar. It's good to have you um, join us today for uh, this webinar series. I just want to acknowledge um, Healthy Families Waitakere for um, bringing this systems change webinar series uh, together. And also to all of um, the movement builders and change makers around the country who are advocating for change in our food systems. Uh, there's uh, such a huge movement uh, occurring where we really recognise that um, kai uh, poverty and insecurity is such a challenge for our community health and wellbeing. So thanks to all the change makers out there uh, who are championing uh, the cause and the kaupapa for their uh, local regions. Um, I am, uh, as Caitlin mentioned, I'm the lead for an impact strategist for Healthy Families Whanganui Rangitike Rua Pehu. Um, our role has been in the last couple of years to support backbone, enrol uh, and enable um, the champions across our region uh, and advocates to come together to form a movement for a regenerative kai system. And today's webinar series, I'm joined by two amazing human beings. Um, as Caitlin introduced you, it's Louise, uh, who's part of our strategic leadership group and um, an advocate and champion um, in the Kai Order Collective. And then obviously Dave, um, who is also a part of that movement and has been there uh, since the inception as well. Both of them are super talented people and um, who better to tell the story of uh, the Kai Order Collective uh, than people that have been part of uh, establishing it and supporting it to grow and create a uh, progressive change. One of the things I love about the principles of Healthy Families is that they guide us and direct us into uh, new and different ways of thinking and working about systems change. And one of those principles is collaboration for collective impact. And in fact, collaboration is the only way that we're going to be able to disrupt the systemic issues that are holding uh, kai poverty and poor health and wellbeing outcomes for our community in place. And to shift the dial, it's going to take more than one organisation or one 
um, group of people to be able to do um, real radical change uh, that affects and includes positively um, our Huano. So um, I'm really here just to introduce these two huma amazing human beings to tell you about the story of the movement of the Kai Order Collective and to encourage people um, to continue to share and uh, uh, support each other across the motu around how we're really going to address our, um, the challenges that our communities are experiencing when it comes to nourishing, access to nourishing kai, but also our resiliency. And even though our, our whānau are extremely resilient, um, what we are seeing is that a regenerative kai system uh, is about kai sovereignty, um, uh, kai security, and then kai resiliency, regardless of whether we're in a crisis, whether we're in a pandemic, it should be the state and way of being for us um, as, a, as a new way of thinking about um, Kai systems. So I'm gonna hand over and who better to talk about it than people that are from the community, who live and breathe the community and who are championing uh, this cause. So I'm gonna hand over to Dave and Louise so that you can get to hear all about this movement that has occurred in our region. Namahi nui ki a koe, tēnā koe Dave, tēnā koe Louise. Tēnā koe Rebecca, uh, kanu te aroha mō uh, tō wakaro. I'll just share my screen, Huana, before I get uh, started. Can you see this slide there? Wonderful, thank you. Um, tēnā koutou e nā oe wāko huihu mai nei ki tēnei uh, wānanga. Uh, in nga mana, in nga reo, in nga karanga maa, uh, in nga mātā waka, nga pai maunga, uh, nga waituku kiriere, kiriere uh, kawatu ki te moana, uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, e te kai karakia uh, e Caitlin, uh, uh, ka mihi atu ahau ki koe mō tō uh, mahi tuku i te arawata mō tātou i tēnā, uh, tēnei wā, uh, tēnā koe, Caitlin. Uh, so as Rebecca said, my name is Dave Hursthouse. Um, I'm the Kai Systems Innovator at Healthy Families Wanganui Rua Pehirangi Tike. I'm part of the Kai Order Collective here in Wanganui and sit on the navigation team. I'm also a Kai grower um, as part of the learning environment at Piwak Walker Farm just upriver. And I'm also the outgoing chairperson of um, Permaculture in New Zealand. So Kai is what I love um, and what I try and live and breathe uh, every day. Um, so what we're talking about here today is, is the widespread transformation of food systems all around Aotearoa. And um, we're going to move from uh, a high systems level and systems perspective um, and go on a journey from a big systems um, perspective right um, down to here on the ground uh, in Wanganui and some of the things that we're, we're up to here. And I'm going to start by um, running through this case for change, which um, what you see on the screen is, is um, a representation of a document, a document that we put together early in the year um, to put forward a case for change for food transformation. So I'm going to walk us through uh, our current reality, our current food reality, um, a vision for the future and what could guide us in that transition. And then we're gonna get into what this looks like here on the ground uh, in Wanganui. So what we're suggesting in this case for change is that uh, the transition from food systems that are uh, detrimental and damaging to social, cultural and ecological health, transitioning from there towards what we call regenerative local kai systems that are uh, mana enhancing uh, and that uplift social, cultural and ecological well-being. Uh, that transition may be one of the most significant transitions we can collectively make uh, to uplift the overall well-being of our people here in Aotearoa. And we believe this because the vision of a regenerative local kai system that we're going to explore today uh, meets, uh, mitigates or resolves so many of the issues that we're hearing about from within uh, our communities. I'd like to begin by grounding us in this whakatauki uh, here, kai kei aki ringa. 
he kai kai aku ringa. In the words of one of our local rangatira and kai champions, Jeff Hipango, uh, this wakatoki refers to our capacity to provide the necessary resources to ensure sustainability and ongoing prosperity. The end product of being able to feed ourselves requires us to return and once again familiarize ourselves with the cycle of kai and the health of the environment. Global consumerism has interrupted this process and created a dependence that has disconnected us from this knowledge that food is health, food is medicine, food is ceremony, and that access to good local food is a fundamental human right. Tēnā koe, Jeff. So let's take a look at this uh, a bit closer. Hia ha tēnā mia te kai, what is kai really? This quote by Monique Fiesel refers to the Te Ao Māori conception of kaya as whakapapa. Uh, it's the great connector that joins us uh, to our tūpuna, our ancestors, uh, our mokupuna, our descendants, um, our wānau and āpori, uh, so our family and communities, uh, te taia, the, the environment um, that we are a part of, and it connects us to each other. And through kai, we're connected to plants, animals, waterways, oceans, forests, uh, the atua, and so kai is central to Māori conceptions of wellness, and for generations it has brought whānau, hapu, uh, and iwi together. So when we talk about kai, uh, we're really talking about so much more than just food that we eat. You know, we're talking about the interconnected systems that generate all that we take into our bodies. And so today our food system, um, it's really not medicinal, eh? and our food our current food system has um, negative effects on our physical well-being, our mental health, spiritual integrity, um, community resilience. And so we call this uh, food system a degenerative food system. And I want to just take a quick look at that. So we're on the same way when we begin uh, imagining a more uh, abundant and uh, nurturing future for our, for our communities. So... Here we've painted a picture of our current food system. Um, and so by degenerative, we mean one that um, degrades or damages life. And that's not just um, biological life or um, life that some people might consider out there in the, in the rest of the environment. Um, that environment is a part of us. Here in Wanganui, we say, ko te awa, ko te awa, ko o. so I am the river and the river is me. Um, we are integral parts of our environment, so anything that is damaging our environment is damaging us too. That's our social fabric, our um, spiritual integrity, um, our cultural integrity, um, and the ecologies, the built ecologies that we're a part of. And these systems create food insecurity by removing food production from local hands. And when communities have no decision-making power uh, around where their kaiga is coming from uh, or how it is produced, uh, they can end up dependent on those who do have power over their lives. Um, so you'll see in this image, we're, we've got a food system that's, that's got its roots in colonial attitudes, it's large scale, and we've got highly processed food, food is produced all around the world, you know, most of what's in our cupboards, and um, probably wasn't grown or produced here in Aotearoa, uh, and most of the profit from that goes to companies or company shareholders rather than um, any people on the ground. It's a disconnector, uh, food is lacking in nutrition and it's damaging for our environment. Um, here we've got some of the uh, negative health effects of that system. Um, so if we have this, um, because of our this uh, rooting and colonial attitudes, we have the neglect of Maturanga Māori and therefore a cultural um, oppression and exclusion from our food systems, um, as well as the environmental disconnection, degradation and social disconnection, um, economic challenges. Uh, and as many of you probably see on the ground, the prevalence of chronic disease and mental health challenges that um, so many of you will understand are intimately tied to um, nutrition and diet. So hopefully that gives a bit of an overview of, of where we're at and which I hope you agree with me, it's not really a pretty picture. Um, to really ground this in reality that I want to just give a little bit of an insight into what our community is saying about their lived experience uh, of the system. So 
these are some illustrations of um, insights that emerged through listening to our community, the voices of our community and their lived experience. And I'll let you just absorb that um, and interpret those as you will, but I want to just speak to one quote um, because I think it really drives home how significant and long-term the effects could be uh, if we don't make some changes. So I quote, this is becoming an intergenerational issue. Rangatahi are missing out on the opportunity to understand the kai, the cycle of kai, and their place in it. They are missing out on the beauty of our whakapapa, our mātauranga, our tikanga. And if they're missing out on that now, where will they be in 50 years' time? So where to from here? What's the inspiring vision? Um, this is our picture of, of an alternative. Um, so we're making a case, one know, for transformation towards uh, networked, locally specific uh, and community developed kai systems that will more adequately provide for our people on the ground. Um, we're talking about regenerative, which um, means that these systems are life creating uh, systems. You know, they, they build and enhance life, um, whether that's community, um, social, ecological life. Um, these systems are socially and ecologically integrated. They generate environmental vitality, uh, community prosperity. Uh, we're rooted in mātauranga Māori rather than um, colonial attitudes, small scale rather than large, low processing rather than high processing, regional rather than global, community oriented rather than profit oriented, relationships oriented rather than a disconnector, food abundance, nutritionally dense, high biodiversity, growing regeneratively and minimizing or eliminating waste from the system. So hopefully you can see in this image that it's a much more uh, cyclical um, and community oriented food system rather than the more linear uh, extractive food system that was um, shown on the prior, prior slide. So a regenerative local kai system really prioritizes the localization of growing, of uh, foraging, of preparing, packaging, distributing, sharing, eating, uh, composting, every aspect of kai comes home to the people. And all decisions relevant to kai are in the hands of the local people involved with feeding their community. And the idea hopefully is that this results in decision-making that ensures community needs are being met. And that's what we mean when we talk about kai sovereignty, right, is that, that decision-making power comes home. So here's some uh, here's a depiction of some of the positive effects of this um, system. So we believe that uh, regenerative local kai systems can improve well-being, uh, foster cultural resilience and multiculturalism, uh, develop climate resilience, um, enhance the natural environment, create employment, uh, empower communities. Uh, most of all, we believe these systems could deeply reconnect people with the whenua, uh, with their wano and each other. Uh, so through localized systems like these, um, kai could become medicinal again. And what I hope you're picking up on is that regenerative local kai systems could be holistic preventative health systems, you know, that, that uplift the well-being of our communities in so many ways, not just physical, but mental, social, cultural, spiritual, and economic. So how to enable transformation? So beginning to move into uh, how, how might we actually do this on the ground? Um, we're talking holistic here, one. So we're talking about, I don't mind. Uh, we're talking about a whole of community, whole of environment, whole of economy approach uh, for collective impact. So we're talking about collaboration across a wide diversity of sectors. Um, all sectors for that matter, uh, to bring about dramatic transformation leading to an overall uh, culture of collective well-being. Uh, we're talking about widespread investment of time and energy um, across public, private community to transition uh, incrementally 
but with pace because it's urgent. Hey, one of these issues we're facing as a collective are dramatic, and I'm sure many of you are witnesses on the ground to um, the detrimental effects of our food system, and I'm sure many of you have witnessed those issues be exacerbated by COVID-19. We sure have here in Wanganui. So we're talking about dramatic change, but carried out firmly grounded uh, in the needs, aspirations, and activities of uh, empowered communities. We're also talking about a transition that has its roots firmly in Mātauranga Māori. Uh, we believe that our current food system has its roots in an industrial extractive mindset uh, that arrived with colonialism and the early transition of Aotearoa into a farm for the British Empire. Um, so here we've brought together the Pai Order Framework of Mason and Jury in alignment with uh, Wakamoa, the Māori Health Action Plan put together by the Ministry of Health. And some of the core principles of Te Ao Māori is articulated by uh, Kore Hiakai in their mana to mana approach to food security. So in terms of Wanaunga Tanga, we're talking about a kai system that is based on authentic trusting relationships between people, organizations, community groups, etc. cetera. Uh, in terms of Manaki Tanga, we're talking about a kai system that uh, upholds the mana of atua environment and people. In terms of wairua tanga, we're talking about a kai system that is culturally and spiritually safe for people to participate in. Uh, in terms of kotahi tanga, we're talking about a kai system that brings communities together to achieve uh, collective wellness. And in terms of rangatira tanga, we're talking about a kai system that ensures uh, autonomy and access for local people. Uh, in terms of ukai pōtanga, we're talking about a kai system that connects people to papatuanuku, to the earth, to the source, to the source of um, all sustenance. And in terms of kaitiaki tangawano, we're talking about a kai system that is ecologically integrated uh, and allows life to, to thrive in the environment around us. So we believe that a kai system that is grounded in these kaupapa at a high level can enable and uplift the well-being of our environments, our families, uh, and our people, Wai order, Wano order, and Modi order, contributing and leading to Pai order overall, overall well-being. To get more specific um, on how this transition might be guided, we look to the Good Food Roadmap, which many of you may be familiar with, was developed by the Southern Institute and Healthy Families South Auckland. Um, it's an amazing piece of work. This roadmap is a guide to support people like yourselves as you work with your communities on this transition. And it plots a transformation from uh, food insecurity and dependency toward Kai sovereignty and Kai security. If you want to learn more about this good food roadmap, there is, um, there is a webinar with Julie O'Bin, who's one of the creators of the roadmap. Um, as a part of the series on, I believe it's November 9th from 11 to 12. Um, so that will go into more detail about this Good Food Roadmap. Um, okay, so it's all been pretty um, sort of conceptual and theoretical in a way up until now. So I'd like to take us down to the ground some more and talk a little bit more about what's going on here in Wanganui before passing over to Louise um, to tell an even more specific story of, of what we're up to. So over the last year, or well, the last year and a half, really since um, our first lockdown uh, in 2020, and in large part stimulated by our experiences um, during that first lockdown, there's been a significant increase in conversation and action around the Kai system here in Wanganui. The movement of Kai Systems Transformation, it's um, increasingly growing in momentum. And some of these conversations led to the formation of Kai Ora, uh, the Wanganui Kai Collective in around mid 2020. So on screen here, you can see the vision of the Kai Collective and the Po that guide us. And these Po, uh, um, they're what we endeavor to presence always as we collectively um, co-create our future. And coming to um, sort of consensus around these po was an achievement in its own right. Uh, so Wano, Wanganui Tanga, 
uh, mana enhancing, sustainable and resilient, and the easiest choice is the healthiest choice. So our Kai system that we are working towards is whānau oriented. It's steeped and rooted in Wanganui Tanga, the authentic uh, expression of Wanganui people in Te Awatupua. Uh, it is mana enhancing, sustainable and resilient, and the easiest choice for our wana in terms of food access becomes the healthiest choice. What uh, this vision means here is that Kaiora is a collaborative network of people um, who are already doing amazing mahi on the ground here in Wanganui. And the point of the collective is to, is to hold everyone together, um, is to align us all to a shared kaupapa, um, align us all around these po. Uh, and to enable transformation to happen in a way that is genuinely collaborative uh, and um, transdisciplinary or transsector or whatever you want to call it, it brings people together so that they can unify and work together towards our common goals. So to do this, um, we kind of facilitate seasonal engagement hui on the ground that are open to anyone uh, to come and learn about the kai movement share what's going on in their space, uh, feed in their lived experience, uh, form relationships and connect up with people. We also have more um, focus group oriented hui, for example, around disease prevention or food redistribution or food in schools, um, local growers um, collaborating with each other, etc. Uh, and then there are all number of small conversations happening around the all here as people link up and connect. So really this collective is about connectivity and enabling people to genuinely work together at a local scale. And there's so many small and large collaborations that have emerged from within the Kai Collective and we're only just beginning, you know, it's only been a year or so. Um, from, the, from a Wanganui perspective, everything connects back to Te Awatupu, the Wanganui River. And this concept of small and large contributions is held um, by Tupu Takawa, the ancestral values uh, that reflect the relationship between uh, people in the river. And in particular, Te Kawa Tuahua, which states, uh, Nā manga iti, nā manga nui e hono hono kuana ka awatupua, which means the small and large streams that flow into one another form one river. And this speaks to the awa as an indivisible whole um, and can guide us in terms of how we think about our local kai movement in Wanganui. Every small and large collaboration uh, contributes to the overall transformation of our kai system. And I speak to this especially because I think one of the most significant, you know, I've talked about some um, overall sort of guiding frameworks and um, you know, guiding kaupapa that could guide us all around the country. But what's especially, we're talking about local kai systems. So what needs to happen is that these kai systems are authentic expressions of what's going on um, in your local region. You know, it's, it's, the, it's that local expression of, um, of sort of universal um, patterns. You know, it's, the, it's what's actually going on for your people. What do your people care about? What's, um, what drives them, what holds them? What's the um, ancestral wisdom that guides them through life? What is it that is authentic and real for your locality? Um, and how can that shape the entire movement and transformation? So, okay, while I'd love to tell you about all the cool things that are happening um, here in Wanganui, which include things like submitting on the council's long-term plan, um, creating a Kai focus group for young mums, uh, some amazing kai and schools, mahi, um, some really cool local collaborations between kai growers and some um, local kai box schemes. Um, I'm now going to pass the arco to Louise Oskam, who's one of our, as Rebecca said, is one of our um, amazing kai champions here in Wanganui, who's part of so many things, uh, but in particular today she's a part of the Wanganui Kai Hub. Uh, which is an initiative that has formed over the last year or so to deal in particular with uh, two significant issues, um, kai access and kai waste. So, all right, ko mutu taku kōrero, ko koutou nga kai aki aki, ko koutou nga kai tautoko, ko koutou nga kai pupiri nga tangatuku iho a kuima koroma, tēnā koutou, 
tēnā koutou, tēnei te meinui ki koutou katoa. Over to you, Louise. Ka pai, uh, Dave. Um, um, there is so much to say and so much to do, um, but today I've got, um, hopefully I can give you a very brief potted view of some of the wonderful uh, work that we've been doing and getting action around uh, the, the fantastic document that Dave and Tom and the Healthy Families team um, did such a fantastic job getting us, getting the words right about who we are and what, where we're going. For me, um, I always like to see action and um, being part of the Kai Hub has been a bit of a long-term piece of work and it started out um, for me with um, actually doing a Manaki bus project using human-centered design as the, the methodology to work um, through this thinking. My background is actually in healthcare and I spent 25 years in um, improvement space in healthcare and running, being a service manager at the hospital, but it's not always the answer and there's so much more. So um, I left and have been working in improvement in business and using lean manufacturing as a, a methodology of thinking. The Monarchy bus was about uh, a group of people with no connections, no organizations, but just a really common theme around people weren't accessing healthy food. So how might we get healthy food, healthy seasonal food to those most in need? And the Monarchy bus project working through the human centered design came up with some insights, which I'm gonna share quickly with you because they, they haven't changed. And when we look at the um, case for change document that we worked through last year, it's interesting to go back and see that the insights were energy is spread too thinly. So we're not, we're not getting, we're getting great people doing great things, but they're burning out in our Kai system. Um, in trading, value has to be given and taken for success. And this was around reciprocity and that the importance of uh, not having people um, reliant on a food system or a giving system, a, a paternalistic system or colonial system, um, is, you know, it has been actually worsened the situation and or magnified the problems in our community. So we need to have um, an understanding around reciprocity. And one of the other things that is really, the other insight was knowledge on healthy food options is limited. And when we looked at this, we looked at from, um, the white entitled right through the whole and everybody in the middle part of our community. It was a common theme that people had limited ability to articulate healthy food and understand uh, Kai system in general. So our prototype was the Monarchy bus. And one day we sat down, well, we haven't worked hard through the process. We ended up with Monarchy bus being a hub and um, a bus or van or some vehicle that moved Kai, healthy Kai around our community, which is, um, it still sits true. So that's the Monarchy bus. So if you're the next, so what happened was we last year formed the Kai or well, the Kai or collective formed, but out of that earlier this year or the end of last year, early this year, we ended up uh, getting a group of high energy, very focused uh, folk to actually look at what a Kai hub would be for our community. It was clear that we needed to do, get some actions un under our way. We were talking with lots of people. We were um, having some fantastic conversations. We were understanding the problem, but what were we gonna do about that? You know, you can talk forever, but if you don't actually get some actions, and man, what a, a year, well, it's been nine months of absolute amazing uh, conversations that we've, um, this group, so we've, um, Jules, Beth, Joe, and myself are the working group and um, Joe and Jules, or Julia, Julie, sorry, <laughs> um, being the kind of the lead, the leaders, but Beth, We're connecting in our community. I've been in our community for 30 plus years. So I've worked in all sorts of places and with all sorts of organization. And Beth's um, the Harrison Street Community Church Community Coordinator and has an amazing set of skills around connecting with uh, our community. And um, jo Julie and Joe come with, came to us along with Dave with this amazing 
the learning environment, Piwaka Waka Farms, and them setting up an you know, amazing space up the hour. So we've formed this group and um, we've had some great kai, a lot, most of it rescue. Um, we've had some incredibly deep and um, challenging conversations about what we are, but we, I put it to the group, we needed to kind of, not we didn't kind of, using good methodology will get us the foundations we need. So when things don't necessarily go right, we always have the foundation. So we have the, the foundation doc, document of the, um, the case for change that uh, Kaiora Collective's got, but we also needed to use good methodology. And so we, we did a lean startup process and we use um, Acumen Plus. So I can't talk strongly enough about using Acumen Plus as a way of educating people around good process to use in the um, social sector. So, um, and it's free, you just need to be committed to the process. Um, and, and follow through and get some, you definitely get outcomes. If you do the process well, you get great outcomes. So we knew we had to write uh, a feasibility study. If we were going to make Kai Hub happen, we needed a feasibility study, but we would also need funding. So there's a bit of, a lot of things happening at once. There's a lot of layers at times, and, and often we end up with layers around all sorts of things. But the lean start, it was about let's focus on why, what we're going to do here and be sure about what it, as a startup, which is what this is, it's a startup business. It doesn't matter that it's in the social sector. It's a startup. So you have to have all those thinkings that you would have in business. So what was our value proposition and what would that look like? So we went, we hypothesis, which I look back now and I think mm, we could have done better, but it's, it is what it is. By creating a space for food rescue, we will engage with our community and reduce food waste. This will enable us to, to provide kai for people in the Wangarui region and share the knowledge and reduce the cost of kai. So it's it's uh, it was a it's um, sometimes I thought we were trying to um, solve food poverty or but but we were able to remain focused. And so one of our um, pro first prototypes was actually a pop up at our local market and talking to people from that particular part of our community and we uh, were lucky enough to rescue some food and we had some fantastic garlic and uh, um, basil so we made pesto and we also had um, some rescue sour, sourdough bread and we also dehydrated till uh, you know if you needed apples around March you would have been able to get some at our pop-up and maybe what we learned from that experience was we were trying to do too much at once but we also had amazing conversations with what we ended up with, with actually was a database of about 150 people you know, thereabouts. So 150 people in our community said, how can I help? How can I engage? I've got time. I've got resources. I want to have conversations. I want more, I want more conversations. So we, we were very positive about that. And we were um, being able to, so our startup was, we, I felt was really successful and, I, and I'm really proud of what our, our team achieved um, and we certainly um, were able to put some meat into our feasibility study so I think that's hopefully our next slide. Oh also informing of this um, so we um, we did actually make sure that we, it wasn't just for enthusiasts where you can see Tom Johnson was in their mix and if you look carefully Dave's probably in the crowd there but we actually um, did also form a stakeholders group and that was from somebody from the council thrive which is a business support organization in town for so part for social enterprise um we've got so what we what yeah, what we got was some money to do the feasibility study i'm bouncing around a bit here but we got some money to do the feasibility study from our council and if you ever get funds you've got to have um good people backing you in a good system so we sustainable we're going to be an organization that's already in the space of um, looking after our climate, looking after our people, uh, they umbrellaed us. So we need, because we needed a charitable trust to um, underpin or overarch or umbrella what we were about. So it's sustainable Wanganui were in the mix. This is our, um, actually, the, the end um, place we got to, which was this feasibility, feasibility feast. But Joe and Julie um, put together uh, an amazing document, which is our uh, feasibility study, which we were then able to use to get 
um, to apply funds from uh, at the council, various arms of the council nationally from um, waste minimization uh, levies and waste minim minimization national fund, as well as MSD. So all the time we're having the, we were having these amazing conversations um, and that was great. But what we were also hearing about was the huge amount of waste and unhealthy kai that was happening in our food and schools program. Um, I don't know if many of you've had much exposure in that place. Um, and luckily, and, and thankfully actually, Beth and Tom had been talking with a small group, a focus group of mums from Key Street School. And um, I am jumping about it, but I won't go there yet. Dave, jump back to our feasibility. I wanna just finish the, um, the feasibility study. So the feasibility study, um, was a, uh, and those are some of the folk in the photo of the newspaper. Yeah, media is an interesting beast. It's fantastic to have this support. Um, and one of the learnings from that is, I'm jumping again, is that having good social media is really important. And we're lucky enough, Beth, among her many talents, is actually great in social, the social media space. So having somebody strong on social media is really important. Having people like Joe and Jules who are, absolutely committed to our community and our environment. And luckily enough, and aren't we blessed, they actually have experience in this space. So using the expertise you already have in your community or that comes into your community is, um, is absolutely um, key. And having John, who's um, there from Sabros, he, he comes from a space and a, a, he makes the most beautiful bread, I have to say to you. If you want to eat, please go to Sabros. I know that's you won't mind me saying that, his bread is the best. But he has a real heart for our community and our environment. And how might we, as a group, kind of get this all together? And it was, it is the hub. And we have been lucky enough, um, we believe, to secure a, a fantastic site um, for our um, hub to start. And we've actually secured funds. So. The council have been um, supportive. Uh, Countdown, um, one of the organisations we plan to spend more time with locally to shift the thinking. But this is all about changing the way people think and see Kai. We still sit with a situation around uh, reliance on handout or, I mean, there is a place for food banks in our community, but where is that? And where's that healthy balance? People, uh, resilience is a much uh, healthier space to be in than reliance. And relying on others to hand out will never, it's not a, it's not a healthy place, not a healthy place for our community. So our Kai Hub, I could, there are many layers of activity that we're undertaking and we're very uh, excited about the next steps. And we are looking at this point now, if the next slide hopefully is the, what next for the Kai Hub. Um, yeah, so great thinking, great concepts, let's form a board. We need to engage and support our donors in our town. We need to continue to spread our community engagement. We need lots of small scale. So we're, we're not afraid to fail and fail fast, but we learn from our, our um, challenges, I suppose. We always will need more funds. And funds, it, you are wrong to think that you that the community can just make this happen. You have to fund the, these sorts of activities and meaningfully under, um, fund them. And I, 5K is lovely, but actually 100K would make a change. So moving to think that, you know, token money is going to make this happen. No, we need um, substat substantial funds, but really we need to move the thinking in our community across the full spectrum of our community with education and it's experiential education it's getting in the kitchen and making it happen it's getting out on the mara and planting and seeing what that looks like and then moving that into the kitchen which is a lovely segue into our key street school project which has fallen out of our kai hub fallen out fallen in i don't know beth and beth has been running this program with um with key street school so a little bit about key street it's a 40 9% transient population school in a very low decile area of our town. The school has had obviously a, a, some drop in um, role, but not enough for work. And, and that, no, it's got 150 students. Um, 
It doesn't have a parent teachers association. So the teachers are the only ones doing all the fundraising and all the everythings. It ha has a high needs um, population, both the children and their whanau. Wano, Wano, sorry. Um, and it's been, it, it selected for itself the external provider lunch program. So, you know, 60%, 66% of their food was being wasted every day because the food that was being delivered, and I um, hope um, the provider's not in the room at the moment, but it was inedible. And uh, we went and had a look at it and it was white and horrible and the chippies were in the bun and it was, oh, yeah. So what we, Beth and I did was we did, a, we did an analysis for them and we came up with some facts that made, them, made us realize that the teachers are really busy. We're spending a good chunk of their, their week cleaning up after this wonderful offer from the Ministry of Education. Um, there was a lot of work around on the food, but the big thing was a lot going to the bin. And what wasn't going to the bin was being re-presented to the children for dinner. Uh, is that okay? I don't think so. Anyway, went to the board and the board were um, just happy to have, well, not just happy, they were really excited to have some support from a, a community in the Kaio Collective being that um, support. And we've been, it feels like the most best, blessed project I've ever been in. Now, I'm not a religious person, but I have to say, every time we touch something in this project, it magnifies. We have engaging with the businesses in that community and saying, we'd love you to be part of this. We don't necessarily want $50. We want your engagement back into the school. So about logistics, about sharing and caring, about your knowledge. Um, so we've got two stream projects. One is we're going to be the internal lunch program. So kids are gonna learn about eating food off a plate with a knife and fork around a table. Novel, but there you go. It's something that's not happening and um, we check that, sadly. Um, Teachers are going to be running programs around Healthy Kai and we're going to be working with the Kai Collective about what gardening looks like and how the whole education of that. The second project is uh, the actually the facilities upgrade. And last night we actually had an amazing meeting with some local builders, electricians and plumbers and they, and designers, they looked around that school and they could, they, it was so exciting. Um, to see how they could use their thinking and their expertise to help that school. And we had lots of conversations about how business might engage with that school. So there's a lot of work going on at the Kai Hub because we're about we're all this fun, we've got this funds, we've got a venue, we're doing that. And then on this side, we've got Key Street School. We've got till um, first term of next, first day of the first term next year to actually get this all set up and running. But I'm really confident with all the fantastic people that have come along on the journey with us. We've got stakeholder groups happening. This is, um, the time is right, we are right. Um, we need to just do, keep focus, but use good practice, use the community, use the resources we've got, and let's change our CHI system. We, um, we can share our feasibility fee study we're about to um, spend some time and uh, get the words sharpened up a bit and start some delivery. But so we're, we're really happy to share that document. We're happy to share whatever we've got. And we know there's lots of people doing great stuff out there. We want to hear it. We've seen lots. So um, yes, that's that's me. I I could talk for hours, but I must stop. My energizer battery has got lots to say, but I'm going to leave it there. That's my all I wanted to share with you today. But we're doing, we want a project. Call me. Ah, no, don't. <laughs> so thank you. Um, back over to you, Rebecca. Um, oh, kia ora, Louise. Thank you so much. And kia ora, Dave. I and mean, this is just, um, I, I just want to wrap this up uh, for us. The, you can see um, how clever uh, and energised. Okay, and so let's... Sorry. You can keep going, Rebecca. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, what it, number one, you know, the kind of thinking and collective intelligence that it takes to look at a system, 
that can be redesigned to be transformational. Number two, what it takes to bring activity and life to the ground. And, you know, Louise and Dave uh, just touched on a couple of initiatives that in a very short amount of time have um, gone from concept to actuality and what um, it takes to support that type of um, movement. And so I just really want to acknowledge them for their, them and all of the Kai Order Collective who have been part of this phenomenal movement. I just think that there are a couple of things that are really important when you are building a movement is the coherency. So that's about creating alignment across the whole ecosystem, all the way into being able to talk to national strategies and policies so that there's direct line of sight of where you can influence the local ecosystem and the system to transform. And the other, which you will all know, is that diverse perspectives um, uh, and diversity in itself is what creates innovation and change. And so that multi-pronged approach that's nuanced to suit uh, uh, the local environment but meets the needs of those most affected by the inequitable systems. That's what the regenerative Kai system is all about, which Dave set up and Louise has given a couple of examples of. And I think that's really important if we're ever to truly shift um, uh, systems and uh, conditions in order to improve the health and well-being uh, of community, is that community lead it. Uh, community and Plano are the designers and decision makers and that their lived experiences are informing uh, uh, the design and development of the way forward. And so our job at Healthy Families is to support collapsing the space between policy and um, flax roots reality and encourage those community champions in Huano to be at the table as the designer and decision maker. I was really fortunate too, uh, I got to commission Dave. So Dave, as you can see, is a part of our team. And um, we're so st stoked that he has come on board uh, with us, not just as a kai, regenerative kai farmer and kaitiaki, but um, as someone that can support us to collapse that space. And then of course, Louise, Louise joining our strategic leadership group so that she can influence um, the decision makers, decision makers and policy makers to uh, shift their thinking and mindset and actions towards a more regenerative system. It's been a pleasure listening to them both today and a pleasure to be here with you to share our part of the movement. Our website um, has the regenerative Kai um, system compelling case for change and a whole lot of other insights reports um, from growing collective wellbeing to rangatahi innovation um, through to maramataka and our um, use of Maramataka as a system for um, health and wellbeing, preventative health and wellbeing. These are great ways of understanding um, what Kwano are thinking and feeling and wanting in terms of positive change. But just thanks so much for having us here today. It's um, It's been a pleasure, well, it's been a pleasure for me to listen to Louise and um, Dave share our story and the story of all those um, change, change makers and champions in our community. Kia ora, Caitlin. Oh, kia ora, Rebecca. Thanks for wrapping that up. And wow, Dave and Louise, um, huge mahi there. And in quite a short, I mean, Dave, you just say working at pace, eh? And you certainly have um, lots of enthusiasm. I, I loved, um, Dave, that you gave a really good overview of the reality for people in Whanganui and your connection to the hour there. Um, and I also really liked that you said decision-making power comes home um, and the needs of those in the local community are met and that's what Kai Sovereignty um, means to you. So that was beautiful. Um, and Louise, thank you for providing, I mean, Dave had this beautiful vision um, and you had examples of the actions on the ground and, you know, what awesome mahi that has happened there um, and your learnings 
as well. I really like you said that resilience is a much healthier place a place to be than reliance. Um, yeah, beautiful corridor from the two of you. Um, we do. We've had lots of comments of, um, on your menu on the way that you've framed your slides and your corridor that you guys have been. Um, doing so lots of acknowledgements there but we do have one question from Hannah Griffin and we might have another one um, do you have any insights on working with community on this kaupapa when Fano are busy for multiple for example trying to hold down multiple jobs how might we move in this space when the current economic system means that people are time poor and exhausted um, Louise or Dave uh, not, uh, you could both comment on that if you would like. Louise, do you want to go first? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is uh, one of the major issues that we have. We've, uh, we have people that are really time poor. And so we believe by having a Kai Hub where a lot of the activity will be happening, there will be a, a Mara where people can come and learn. There will be a place where healthy food's available, readily and quickly available. Um, it's education, it's just making little small steps and making it really accessible, like no barriers, there's no, everybody's welcome. And, and it's about taking it out to the community, just you know, keeping it moving around the on more eye, move it, move it to where there, there is action. That's that's really um, really important. But you working with the willing, I have to say, after years and years of improvement processing. Work with the willing and, and those that are struggling or are time poor will, um, there will come a time, it might be a sad day morning, it might be, a, you know, I don't know, just don't ever give up. That's important. Oh, cool. Thank you, Louise. Dave, do you have something to add to that? Yeah, um, I think it's such a big and important question and one of the, the great challenges. Um, a couple of things, go to the people rather than expect them to come to you. Um, you know, make the most of people who have time who are time rich and have space and energy and if you are one of those people don't expect those who are time poor or without energy to come to you um, make the most of your um, privileged experience to go to them and listen um, and listen rather than expect action you know like tr uh, try and avoid putting pressure on people who are already experiencing so many pressures in their lives to um yeah, avoid putting pressure on them to act or to make radical changes in their lives when it's hard enough just to get by. So um, take on as much of that pressure and um, energy input as possible. The other thing is reciprocity, making sure that um, that engagement is beneficial for everyone involved. So yeah. um, whatever that might look like for your people. Yeah, kia ora. Um, thank you, Dave. Um, we just have some, some more words of acknowledgement here, um, but we will. I will take the time to close us up, if that's okay. Um, for those of you who came on a bit late, Aroha Mai, uh, Facebook wasn't working for us, so thank you for joining us on here. Um, I think there's been some problems with Facebook. Um, and as Dave said, we can send um, some links to the reports and the feasibility study um, and others without, with the recording after. Uh, so I really want to acknowledge Rebecca, Louise and Dave, uh, th thank you for taking the time and sharing uh, your corridor, I'm sure there's many around the motu who can benefit from this. Um, and I really want to acknowledge all of those who, um, who you have touched touch points in your community who have also been part of this journey. Uh, big mahi to them as well. And to all of you, thank you for taking the time to listen. Um, I'll just close us with a karakia. Pau hihiri, pau rararama, pau o te whakaaro, pau o te tangata, pau o te aroha, te pau ihiri nei i a tātou, mauri ora ki a tātou, haumi e, hui e, tai ki e. Take care everyone, thank you for coming to listen. Ka kite. Ka kite, kia ora i te wana.